Yo, this is a motherfucker who needs no introduction. You are watching Breaking Records Radio. All right, you are now tuned in to Breaking Records Radio. My name is Alex, and I have here with me Akil Ali from Mount Vernon, New York. The MC has been dropping consistent heat as of recent with his latest EP, Dirty Spirits, just recently released on November 11th of 2020, which you can pick up now on Bandcamp. Please welcome to the show, Akil Ali. What's good, my man? What's going on, man? What's popping? I appreciate you having me on. Man, I appreciate you taking the time to speak to me here today. Um, Yeah, I appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to this conversation. Yes, sir. Um, So I want to talk about the new record. I definitely do. I want to talk about any kind of upcoming work that you have going on. But I would like to kind of take a step back, introduce yourself, and kind of, um, I don't know, go over some history anyways, and kind of get the the listener a good idea of who exactly it is that that you are. Um, I guess starting with history, if we want to take it back right to the very beginning, what was your first introduction to to hip-hop culture? Not even necessarily injecting yourself into it in any significant way, um, but just from a band's perspective, what was your first introduction? Um, My step-pops, you know what I'm saying? He had did like a 13-year bid, and he would send me home tapes and shit when I was like nine, you know, eight, nine years old. And he would send me, like, tapes and shit of, like, you know, uh, Biz Marquee, Rakim, Big Daddy Kane. So, you know, from young, I was already into, like, the lyrics. You know what I'm saying? I was already into, like, a lot of verbiage. So growing up, from, like, seven, eight, nine, ten years old is when, you know, I was really getting acclimated into hip-hop. That's amazing. What era was this? Was this the you, – you mentioned some of the artists, like, Biz Marquee and whatnot. So I assume this is kind of the late 80s, early 90s? Well, it was, it was, it was actually late 90s, but what it was is that – he was, he had so many different tapes and he was older. Gotcha. He was just kind of, I guess, his way of showing me like the history of it all. Gotcha. You know I mean? So, he, so I was always like a, considered like an old soul. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so I was always into like the older music. You know what I mean? The lyrics, the Wu Tang Clan and all that stuff. So I was into all that shit. Gotcha. Those prison tapes are, are really interesting because a lot of times they don't even have the cover artwork or anything, right? They're just released as the um, the actual physical cassette tape, and then they have this shrink wrap over it. Was that the the way that you were getting them, or were this from his personal collection? Yeah, what I would do is he would give me his personal collection. It would be like mixtapes. Some, some of them tapes would be like dubbed, you know, just tapes that he might have just made. And then um, I also, when I got around like 11 years old, I would go to this place called Yellow Birds, which is like a legendary uh, uh, radio radio place uh, with tapes and stuff in Mount Vernon, New York, and um, just get all type of mixtapes and all type of tapes. I would just buy, you know, all type of little different things, you know what I mean, and just listen to it. I would sit home, and I would just sit there. I would just listen to that shit. Yeah. So what? Uh, at what time do you end up, I guess – actively seeing this as something that you want to end up doing, let it be picking up the pen, um, doing graffiti writing, doing something that's actually participating in the culture. When does it go from being a fan to, to actually doing something about it? Um, You know, so crazy. Um, You know, I play, I played pro football for a little bit. Oh, wow. And um, I always like, I always used to write, you know, my friend, I always freestyled. And then when I got maybe like 13, 12, I used to like kind of record, with like the headphone into the fucking into the radio over like like singles and shit and then when i got older i would record a song here and there i always would write every now and then i was real big on freestyling though and people used to always be like man you got it man i think you could do something but i just was just always playing football so once i got a scholarship for football i just wasn't really ra- make like rapping no more but i was listening to the people who was like influencing me and shit and i just always in the back of my mind was just like one of these days man, i'm gonna just start really rapping like it was just building up inside of me, but that football had took me away from it for a while. Fair enough. Yeah, the the football thing's crazy because there's comparisons with that and the the um, just being an artist, I guess. Period. Right. It's the it's the amount of commitment and determination that it actually takes. Right. Like doing any kind of sports or, or athletics to that degree and, and kind of on a serious level, that takes your whole life away from you. Right. That's um, it's it's a huge kind of focus, right? Um, oh, no. Being able to transition that sort of mentality to art, I think speaks volumes, right? You end up seeing people that are releasing material consistently. They're, they're, they're treating their craft as if they're a professional football player, right? Um, they're treating it like it's, it's everything. And I feel like that's the mentality that you end up needing in order to be successful with any kind of artistry. Um, and it's a, obviously a mentality that's that's forced upon you if you want to be a professional in any kind of sports um, kind of sports capacity for sure for sure um so at what point here so you're getting into it you're writing you're 
um, kind of taking a, a shot at things in order to actually pursue music. At what point do you start realizing that this is this is kind of paying off to some degree? Um, obviously not kind of on a professional level or being able to, to live off of it solely, um, but at what point do you really kind of decide that this is the direction that I'm going to end up taking? Um, after a while, like I came out with this, uh, my first EP called Visions of a Lost King, and I was just, you know, just seeing a reaction, you know, the good little reaction I was getting from that, and people were actually buying it. And that's when I was just like, yo, like, you know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm getting love. You know, I'm seeing people sharing my music. They're telling me, you know, that it's touching them. And then it was like, I think right now, this moment, where we are now, you know, after, you know, getting the line with G4, uh, Law of Mob, and just him curating this album, and um, just seeing how, you know, everything is going now. I think this is like the time where it's just like everything is like kind of like paying off, you know, all the work I put in, um, you know, my, the fans that I had prior and then the, the fans, the, the new the new fans. So I just think that, you know, um, he put me right in the lane that I'm supposed to be, which is just a real raw hip hop lane. You know, I should have always kind of been in that lane, but I was, you know, I had to like kind of like figure it out. Gotcha. Are you still playing football? Yes, I play. Uh, I run around a little bit. I play semi-pro. Um, my team is actually the number one team in the nation. Um, I just run around now. I'm, I'm a little bit older than I was when I was younger, but uh, you know, I just kind of, you know, I run around to stay busy and you know keep me keep me in some type of shape. You know what I mean? So I still, you know, competitively run around. But it's probably about last year now because I'm a little bit more busier. But you know, on the weekends, I, I, I go out there and run around. I play for for a couple of hours. What team were you playing for, kind of when you were taking it most serious? Uh, I went to University of Pittsburgh on a full scholarship. Um, I was an All-American, and then I was with the Colts briefly. I had a cup of coffee with them, and then I played some arena. You know, I was traveling around, played some arena and stuff like that. That's amazing. I, how are you seeing that transition to, to hip-hop? Are you seeing comparisons in your own life? Yes. Um, you know, there's always politics and everything, every form, every system. Um, the way that Lord Mob and Sly Family, we move, we move like a team. You know, we move like a football team, the continuity, um, the relationships, uh, you know, working on your craft. You know, you always got to keep working on your craft and you got to push your pin. Um, you know, there's ups and downs, but you always want to stay level-headed. Um, and, and just like the way you uh, market yourself, uh, the hard work you got to put into the shit, because, you know, you, you get out what you put into the independent grind. And, um, you know, it, it just it's just like going from one, one dynamic to another. It's just a little bit different, but like very similar. I want to I want to talk about G4 because that's the that's the click that is um, at the very least most tied to your name as of now. Um, how did that end up coming together? Well, that's my boy. Um, I met him at uh, Gorilla Grooves Radio, and I was uh, I had did a vinyl called "Today Means Everything" with Carter P. And um, we knocked out a vinyl, and um, I was there. G4 was there, and I was after his segment. Oh no, he was after my segment, and you know, we vibe. We was talking. Um, you know, I went in there, I freestyled, I spit, um, and they played some, some, some cuts from the album and then we just linked and then um, I want, I wanted a feature, you know, I felt like, you know, like when I met him and, you know, I, I did a little bit more research on him. I saw how, how, how dope he was as an artist. So I was just like, you know, I want to do a feature. And then it went from, you know, us, uh, linking up at Vinny Idol studio to doing another song, then another song. And the next thing you know, we just like, we just around each other all the time. And then we write and we create and we make other songs. And then before you know it, you know, it just kind of organically, like literally organically after like about like a month or two months, we just spent so much time together that, you know, eventually he just kind of figured like, yo, you should, you should come fuck with us. So are you guys both a part of what is, I guess, more broadly considered Doe Network? Well, Doe Network is an A&R, you know, that's a, that's a good dude. Two seconds, two seconds. Okay. Um, Doe Network is an A&R. Um, he's basically a curator. Um, he, he knew how to get uh, Yo Snowa the beat maker. Gotcha. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, he, he got Yo Snowa the beat maker. Him and G4 um, curated to find like a beat maker that they set that they they felt like fit. And then um, we just kind of just got together. G4 correlated the sound, um, sent me the beats, and I was just at home just getting to it. You know, I was just get get to it, and then eventually G4 used his relationships. Um, to extend, you know, to try to grab some features that, you know, guys that I bumped into that he felt like fit, and they all fuck with it. And then we just created, you know, Dirty Spirits. You know, um, right now I'm about four videos in, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, working, I got a couple of videos that dropped, and I got some other stuff going. So G4, man, since he's, 
since we've been together, man, he correlated a lot of things, and he just got me, you know, he, he put me right to work in a great way. I want to talk about Dirty Spirits again for those listening at home. It just recently came out November 11th of 2020, and you can pick that up on Bandcamp now. Um, the There's a future on there from Planet Asia. Uh, Planet Asia obviously being a respected vet in the game for quite a while. How did you end up landing that future? What's your relationship um, with Planet Asia? Uh, well, we have a relationship now. That's my guy. That's big bro. Um, G4, I linked that up. And he was like, yo, man, I got to link you with Planet Asia. You two dudes that sound dope on a track together. So he linked that up. Um, and it's crazy because we went and recorded. The song ended the video the same day that I met him. So, like, it was all organic. Um, you know, he was, you know, just from the gate, the time that I met him, you know, we was uh, just vibing. He was teaching me a lot of stuff, you know, dropping jewels. He's a real organic dude, man. Um, you know, um, just real humble. And um, you can just tell, like, he just wants to see other people win. You know what I mean? I, I took his number. And we speak. You know, we speak throughout the week every now and then. He supports and shares my stuff, you know, a lot of organic stuff. So, you know, shout out to my boy Planet A, man. I appreciate him. It's a good dude. You mentioned that the production palette was handed over to you. The the production on here, the beats, I think are I, I think are amazing. They're this kind of soulful kind of grit uh, to them, and they still end up having that throwback sound. But but there is that element of soul on on almost every song. Um, was that something that you wanted for this album, or was that something that kind of came um, as a coincidence? Um, yeah, it definitely came as a coincidence. Um, but it was just all like so organic, man. You know, I love samples. Um, you know, um, I, I really feel like G4, uh, and Doe and Yoso really did a great job of kind of correlating in between, you know, cause I ride both ways. You know, if you hear some of my music, I can get real dark and gritty at times, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes I can really be a little bit more on the light foot, you know what I mean? So Dirty Spirits just allowed me to kind of straddle the line a bit. And just kind of like, kind of just like show both dualities, you know, both sides. This album here is released digitally on Bandcamp. Um, are you planning any kind of physical release for for this project or previous material that you've put out? Um, let that be cassette, CD, vinyl. Um, what's your your kind of plans for the rollouts for these? Are you just sticking with digital or? Um, no, we uh, we did the digital. Uh, we just did the digital for now. Uh, just to get people, you know, acquainted. Um, we did the band camp. Um, I'm on all platforms, but then we're going to do, definitely want to do the physicals. Um, we're going to do some vinyls. You know, um, we, uh, people have been asking for it. We just want to kind of create a little demand, um, being that it was my first, you know, album, like, in this lane. Um, but it's been nothing but love. You know, guys like yourself, other people have been sharing it. And, uh, you know, we, we, we've seen the momentum build each video. Um, more and more people are catching on to it. So, you know, I'm getting people who's hitting me up in like France, you know, like, yo, man, you got physical copies that I'm, you know, I'm getting a lot of a lot of great feedback. So, you know, we're definitely gonna have the physical copies and the vinyls. Definitely. And I also got my merch. It's dropping on the twenty third the twenty third. We uh posted it recently on my Instagram and stuff like that and people are loving it, but the different flavors of the album, you know, different, 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 you know, different um variations of it. So, you know, it's been a dope process. That's really dope. I'm a physical media guy myself, and I always look forward to being able to cop something that's physical, right? Something that's I can have in my hands and I can revisit time and time again. I can have on the shelf and I can see that it's physically in my collection. Um, that's something that I always kind of value and cherish when it comes to art and how I, how I at the very least, experience uh, experience the art. Um, I think the video game is also like really impressive, just being able to, to pump out those videos. Um, it takes a again a certain level of determination and it's also a, a different medium that you that you have in order to explore your art right you write these songs in most cases you write them without the intention of creating a video for them um but it's a way that you're able to kind of adapt it into something that's that's new um and kind of breathe new life into a project that already exists what's your um What's your kind of vision, at the very least, for pumping out these videos? Because that is a, an uncommon amount of, of videos for a, kind of a for an EP, right? It's a smaller project uh, to already have a handful of videos out. That's that's substantial. Um, what you do is, um, you know, I'm around G4, man. That boy be working. And what I wanted to do with this album was, I wanted to create an experience. And I just feel like, you know, if you got the budget or if you if you have the the uh, the resources. You know what I mean? Just give the fans, you know, just, you know, I, I feel like, you know, usually people do two, three videos, but, you know, the way the momentum was building for this album, it was like people just kind of like are hitting me like, y'all want a video for this? I want, and you definitely don't want the people to control you, but it's definitely the demand for it. So I know people, I came up with the, uh, you know, I had to do a video for Utopia with Planet Asia. 
I got a song with the Mussolini on there. You know I got to do a video with the Mussolini. Yeah, Pimp um, Flow, yeah. That was a great track. Yep. You know what I mean? So then it's just like, then I got, then I got, um, I had one with G4. You know what I mean? Dark Days. We got that video on Ice. You know, that video was done. And, um, and then I got, I got the one by myself, uh, Lonely Soul, or Reflection, rather. That one is the one that I'm going to drop tomorrow. So, you know, then I got the song, I'm Different. You know what I'm saying? I got I got a couple of songs in there that people just want to see the video for. So, you know, as long as I, I see a great demand, then I'll, I'll try to meet it as best I can, at least probably making maybe six videos out of nine. You know, because um, I, I see that, uh, you know, more people are catching up, so I'm going to be working this project for a little bit. You know, so crazy, this project only been out for a week. Yeah, November 11th, right? Like, yeah, exactly, a week. A little bit more than mm-hmm. a week. That's crazy. Yeah. So... What's I know you said that you're working on on this project and you're you're letting it absorb anyways and you're working on videos you're working on promoting this project and physical is down the line as well. Um, what's what's coming up afterwards? What's your your current kind of um, two or three year plan? What do you, what are you kind of envisioning for yourself as an artist over the next few years? Um, well, you know I'm in a situation. Well, you know I, my home base is Fly Family. You know G4. I'm also Lord Mob. You know with Flea Lord, uh, Me Fox, and the rest of those gentlemen over there. So now the next thing is um, we got the uh, Lord Mob compilation coming out. Um, I'm on about like maybe two or three songs on that one. Um, and then right now I'm, I'm working on another project with Zaza, the guy who's also with Lord Mob. You'll be hearing about him, you know, real soon. Um, he's another, another, another young king that snuck up, that, that Flea Lord is, you know, really thinks highly of, that, that really, be, you know, really be talking. So now me and him is working on a project right now as we speak. We're finishing that up. Me and G4 got a project in the cut. That we got to finish up. We got probably like two more songs to go. So you know, um, you know, right now, man, I'm, I'm just kind of just, just working, um, working hard to where you know I get, I'll get, I'll eventually get to a, a time where I'll be able to kind of slow down a bit and just you know keep. I just keep working right now while I'm in this mode. You know, you just want to keep knocking out these songs, you know, and, and then just keep building a catalog, and then eventually, you know, just uh, before before you know it, you're looking up. It's 2022, and you got you know new stuff. So I'm almost damn near done with all the next year's work, almost. I got a lot of work. Yeah. You mentioned Flea Lord's name a couple times there, and Flea Lord's an artist that I've been checking up on pretty consistently over the last few years. Um, and his work with the Griselda guys, I think, has, has made him a little bit more of a household name within the underground hip hop community. Um, how did you end up meeting Flea Lord? I met Flea Lord through G4. Um, you know, um, G4, me being around him, him, you know, going to meet up with Flea, and, you know, Flea came to my house one day. And um, he came to my crib, came to my living room, and we sat and we spoke. And just from there, it was just all organic, man. And at that time, he wasn't really sure, you know, what he wanted to do with me, but we were going to work on a feature. I was going to work on a feature with Fleet, and that was going to be, like, my next thing. And then, you know, after a while, being around G4 consistently, you know, just being around, you know, Fleet Lord seeing me working, and I came out with the album, and then he did the Lord Mob brunch, and then, um, you know, Me Fucks invited me. And, you know, those are the top dogs, me, Fox, and Fleet. G4 is, you know, up there, and my name just kept floating around, and the guy was just like, yo, we got to bring our Kelly on. And um, I went up there to the Lord My Brunch, held my own, went in there with the rest of the spitters. You know, I was in there with everybody, and we was all in there in tune, writing songs on the spot, you know, hooks on the spot, everything on the spot. And, um, you know, after that, you know, that's when Fleet was just probably like, you know, like this dude, like, you know, we, we, you know, we got a spot for him. Man, the confidence that that takes, though, in order to go into a cipher like that and, and hold your own and be comfortable and confident enough that you, you know you're going to end up holding your own amongst some of those heavyweights, um, that's a big deal. Yeah, man, as an artist, man, you just got to really, you got to also respect the other artists, but you just got to know that when, whenever your turn comes, you just, just got to do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? You, when, when your turn comes and your number's called, you just got to believe in what you do. And uh, don't get discouraged. You just gotta really just kind of just you know this is what you're here for. You're here for your pen. You gotta put your put your put your mark on it. Hundred percent. 
Yeah, I, I listened to Dirty Spirits earlier today and I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, I'm that's the type of hip hop that I end up liking, right? You mentioned you mentioned names like Flea Lord, and that's the shit that I like. That, those Griselda cats, the that kind of dusty, gritty kind of throwback '90s sound, but this this hardcore hip hop that that's seemingly just coming out of New York and upstate New York specifically, just time and time again. People like Spesh K, um, people like yourself. I think this is a really powerful you know, movement that we're seeing with hip hop right now. Right. And um, just from what I've been hearing, it's like, you know, I, I straddle the line. You know, I do that gritty shit, but I also can, you know, I talk a little melodic, conscious type. You know, I throw a lot of little different different gems throughout my music. So, I, you know, it's, it's more like, you know, Fleet, he put together a dope team of, you know, different artists with different flavors who bring a different type of element. And he's just mixing us all together. 100%. I'm really looking forward to any kind of new material that you have going on. Uh, where can people kind of stay up to date with you? What's your social media presence like? Um, it's dope. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's growing. I got about like almost 8,000 organic followers. Um, you know, it's growing by the day. Um, you know, um, my pictures, you know, I get a lot of great, you know, organic interaction. My videos, everybody's anticipating stuff. I'm seeing a lot of new people sharing stuff. You know, that's big. Like, you know, you see people, like, sharing your stuff. Um, I, I can feel the anticipation, you know. So, uh, you know, you can find me. Um, anybody follow me, you know, you can find me on Instagram, A-A-Q-I-L underscore A-L-I underscore E-L. I kill out E-L. Um, you know, my link to my album was on there, the Bandcamp link, for the people who want to support um and then also it's on, it's on all platforms, um, you know, so guys can check me out on Bandcamp, Instagram. I'm on Twitter. It's the same name. My, my name on Instagram is the same on Twitter. And, you know, I'm, I'm you know, just keeping it, keeping it flowing. Man, that's super dope again. I'm really excited to check out any new material that you have going on. And once again, for those listening at home, November 11, 2020, the release of Dirty Spirits. It's a really solid album. You have features on there from the Mussolini, uh, Shayna Ashley, uh, Quentin Gilmore is on there. Um, yeah, G4, and then again, Planet Asia on the last cut on there, uh, Utopia. Really, really solid. Um, definitely recommend going out and checking out that project and stay on the lookout for any new material that you have going on as well. Um, Again, man, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to speak to me here today. I appreciate it, and I'd love to have you back on in the future whenever you do end up having new material coming out. Oh, not for sure. I appreciate you. I got a video dropping um, tomorrow, um, tomorrow night, around like 8 o'clock. It's going to be the premiere of my video, uh, Lonely Soul, which is the second song on my um, which is the second song on my album. Um, a lot of people are loving that song, so you know we had to do a video for that real fast. And then um, G4 got Black Coffee. He got um, um late October coming out. He got a couple of drinks too. So you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of energy, man. A lot of us is working, but we're putting out stuff, and um you know we're just working at that. Um, um Flea Law got an album coming out. Um, no more humble fashion. That's number eleven. That's coming out, and then we got the we got the Law of Mob compilation. So it's a lot of stuff coming, man. It's a lot of a lot, a lot of work coming. I'm excited. All right, you have yourself a wonderful day. And again, thank you so much. And I'd love to, to keep this relationship going uh, down the line and speak to you again whenever new material comes out. Comes out. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. You'll definitely, you'll definitely be one of the first to know. Oh, All man, right? Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And um, yeah, I'd love to, again, just be able to keep this communication going whenever new material surfaces. Yes, sir. I super got you, man. All right. Sounds good. Thank you once again, man. All right, brother. I appreciate Peace. you.